Lush that. Was it? Yeah, I love that. Thank you. Uh, hello, welcome back. Sax.co.uk. Other people of the internet. Now, uh, today we're going to uh, tackle an age old question that we get a lot in here, which is the what does my money get me question. So, the only way we can think to do that is to compare our entry level saxophone, alto saxophone, which is our Sakuzu, the gold lacquer one that Jim just so effortlessly played for us just then and uh, an 8,000 pound Janica Sauer, because you know, why not? We're it, going for extremes really here, aren't we? Because we could do the test where we do um, a slightly more expensive student instrument than this one. So this one's currently at 300 pounds, 299. So we could do a 400 pound one and then maybe a three or 4,000 pound sax, sort of 10 times the value. But we've gone for the extremes, which is just a little bit more interesting. So like a 299 sax and and then what, what are we talking for this one again? Well, a seven, eight, six, yeah. five or something okay. ludicrous like that. So, um, as I say, people come in a lot and they come in and go, oh, OK, so what's the difference between this saxophone and this saxophone? They look the same. And in fairness, it's a good question. It is a good question because they are very similar in weight. They look the same from about... 30 foot away. Yep. It's only when you get up close and personal, you realize there's a lot more going on with, with a saxophone like this. Um, so these are the, the detailed questions that people ask and it's what gets us scratching our head thinking, how can we answer this question? Exactly. So uh, when we break down this question, I think the easiest way to break it down is the difference between sort of a 300 pound saxophone and a eight, nine, ten thousand pounds saxophone. It's all going to be about how it's made, what it's made from, and where it's made. Are the three key factors. Now, how it's made is going to be sort of the most important thing. Because at the end of the day, if something is made better, it plays better. It's like everything in life. The better it is, the better it will do. And um, well, there's lots of things we need to look out mm. for when we're looking for a well-made saxophone. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to start with, this is a well-made saxophone. Um, the um, market, especially in Chinese saxophones like this one here, has rocketed recently because the quality has just jumped astronomically. You look five, six, seven, eight years ago um, at the time of this recording, a Chinese saxophone would literally be like a bit of lead carried mm. around your neck. It'd be a nightmare. Uh, now, with the quality that you can get out of Chinese fa uh, factories, especially the ones we seek out specifically, you're going to get a saxophone that plays mm. really well and it's, yeah. you're going to save a lot of money compared to trying to buy an old terrible Yamaha off of eBay that you don't know if it's going to play properly. We know this plays. But yeah. what are you looking out for in yeah. the quality I, of that? I mean, I think it's just the experience of these Chinese factories. You know, t uh, 10, 20 years ago, perhaps, they just don't, didn't know what they were doing so much. But now, just through the feedback that they get through you know, their players and what have you, um, they've just upped their game. Um, so quality of materials, so it's about the, the brass material, the actual quality of it, and the quality of the components, um, the material of the components as well. Um, so, I mean, this is the basic construction of a saxophone, so that's what we're ultimately talking about. And, and there is a difference um, between this saxophone and this saxophone in terms of that level of quality. Um, but I, I think the interesting thing that we're going to find out um, is that uh, when you play an instrument like this, especially when you've got a decent mouthpiece on and a reed that's working, um, that difference is probably a lot less than you might think. Um, you're still going to sound like a, it's still going to sound like a saxophone, um, and it's it's still going to have the same sort of depth of sound in there and layers of sound, and it's the tuning is basically going to be. Um, in place, but there will be variations in tuning between a basic saxophone and a more expensive saxophone. That that's a given. That's true. I mean, there's variations in my tuning when I play. Period. But uh, <laughs> that we won't get into that. That's a, that's a conversation for uh, me and me alone, I believe. Um, so uh, it's if you're not hearing the difference as obviously, it's going to be where you feel 
the difference as a player. Yeah. So on our entry level instrument, um, what's the sort of overwhelming feeling of it? Okay. So so what you get on the on the entry level saxes is, is um, the action doesn't feel as um, firm and precise and responsive and even as you might get on a saxophone like this. Um, you might use a term sort of squashy. It, you can feel like um, as you as you press the keys down and the pads make contact with the tone holes, that there there's a sort of yeah slight feeling of squashiness as as everything closes down and it's finds its place spongy. as it were. Uh, it's, yeah, the sponginess. Um, sometimes you can get um, double action, which is to say, as you press a key down, you feel one little bump as two parts connect, and then you press it further, and then another little bump occurs until it finally finds its landing place. I, I will say that's something that actually does happen to pro horns as yeah, well. Yeah, uh, exactly. it can, double action is something that can happen um, when a horn is not made, uh, maintained very well. So yeah. if you are feeling double action on a very expensive form, come and see us, we can look yeah. after you. But yeah. um, yes, it's gonna be more prone to happen on a student level it, saxophone. It, exactly, yeah, to different extents. Um, and all of that just gets tidied up as you go to, to the expense of instruments. Um, so um, it's just like a, get, a great action on a, on a really expensive piano. It feels wonderful to play when you just hit that first chord on a Steinway, for example, um, compared to a really basic one. It just sort of feels, it just doesn't feel right. No, of course. <laughs> um, now, um, as I'm talking in general terms here about cheap versus more expensive instruments, um, I wouldn't um, put this uh, 300 pound saxophone in that category of having that that squashiness or clumsiness or whatever um, because it's actually pretty good in all of those areas yeah I mean you will feel an improvement on this one of and course. I know I'm progressing to that one in a minute but um, it ain't that bad no exactly for 300 pounds you can't sniff at it no. uh, some people don't have eight nine ten uh, eight nine ten ten hundred <laughs> good nice well done Michael no, eight nine hundred pounds to spend on a new saxophone and having this saxophone here uh, there are higher options as well in case you didn't want to pay up front as well again seek our website give us a ring if you have any questions at all uh, it's just such a viable option. It makes music accessible to more people, which is what we need in this, uh, well, now with, uh, at the time of this recording, Boris Johnson's in. Nice, I can't stop. Oh God, okay, right. Yes. Yeah, I'm gonna move on Moving before on I political cry. Spheres. Um, yeah. So I think, uh, give us another blast on yeah, this guy. Yeah, so I'll give you a blast of this and then we'll move on to this one and discuss the Yanni. So, here we go. <laughs> Still sounds like you. It still sounds like it still makes me sweat. And enchanting this guy ever, doesn't sweat, by the way. I, 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 I don't know. It's all because I'm the peak of physical fitness. Just remind fitness. them that this is the hottest day of the year. Yeah, um, it is. It's rather warm yeah, today. So we definitely. Just mention that. By the way. Now let's move you on to well, our eight thousand pound example, which is the uh, Yanagisawa AWO thirty seven. Now the first thing you notice straight away is just how gorgeous it is straight away it's this you've got the master engraving so these all these little details are hand engraved by a master engraver in japan and it just looks stunning the second thing that's worth noting as well is this is made of solid silver so moving on from the sort of traditional brass finish solid silver being a precious metal means of course it's going to be more money and it's you've got a lot more weight yeah, to it, it as well. Let's do a, a rather haphazard... Go on, do a weight test. Yeah. You can really feel a difference in weight there. I mean, it's not like... Not, you're not going to need a forklift to pick it up. It's no. not huge, but you can definitely sense that yeah, a, it's yeah. got a weight and it's got a quality to it yeah. for that. Yeah. You can have that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I think that um, if this was just a standard brass Yannick versus um, this brass Sakusu, 
you would feel a bit more weight with this one, but not to the same degree of, as this one because it's just a solid, solid sterling silver, as you say. Um, the wood, there's a bit more weight, not just in the, um, in, in the precious metal here, but there's a little bit more mechanism as well. Um, and one little thing to point out, and this is often the case with more expensive instruments, um, is that we have these, um, these sections of brass soldered onto the um, body, which in turn have the posts, uh, pillars soldered onto, so it just adds a little bit of stability. So these solid layers of brass down here, adding a bit of weight in the design and in the sound as well. Um, so let's just give this a blast. Yeah, definitely. I'm eager to hear it. One thing I will say before you start though, is a question we do get is uh, why aren't the keys silver? Um, oh. Solid silver is a very soft material. Um, don't get me wrong, it's not gonna like, you can't manipulate it in your hands, but if, you're, if you made your key work out of solid silver, it would just not, got, you would just manipulate it out of place. Yeah. So you absolutely have to keep the, um, the key work brass even when the yeah. whole of the body is yeah, solid Yeah, adding silver. that strength there, yeah. Still my beating heart, that yeah. is lush. Okay. Oh. Oh. Did you hear the difference? Yeah. Yeah. You really can. Well, I mean, it it's good to ask you because it always feels different from a player's perspective. You know, you feel the difference as a player, but then it always when you're connected to the sound, there's something else that's added when you when you play it. So it's always good to ask a listener. So yeah, you could. Right. It's just so lush, it's just like Velvet, it's like, whoa, it's, oh man, I'm, yeah. I've got a bit of a soft spot for the alto anyway, so oh, okay. nice. uh, uh, any good alto playing just sort of melts me straight okay. away, so yeah. I'm like, oh, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, for me, the sound just kind of oozes out a little bit more. I mean, with the sterling silver, you get a natural kind of richness. Um, it's very intense sound with the sterling silver. If, if this was just brass, it would be a more, it would still have that firmness of tone, that quality of tone. Um, the extra body of tone that I think you're getting with this naturally over the Sakusu there. But the, the sterling silver just adds that extra element of kind of exoticness and richness in the sound. It's a, it's a very intense kind of flavour of sound. It's, yeah, it's, uh, you can very, really sense the yeah. weight from, because, uh, well, I mean, solid silver is so um, dense as a material yeah. and you can really sense the sort of gravity of the tone. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. it's just, I mean, compared, I mean, it is, it's night and day. I mean, you do really hear where the money goes on something. So the Anagasawas, they are handmade in Japan. Um, a lot of the uh, processes are automated now. That's to uh, help with accuracy mm. um, because um, the Anagasawa pride themselves on being very consistent instruments yeah. but all of the finer details are completely hand finished and yeah. it, it's just, there, it, there will be more time spent in terms of the finishing processes um polishing obviously there's intense engraving going on here the assembly and the setup um it's these kind of labor intensive processes that add the um the extra hours um in terms of the timeline i'm not sure exactly what the differences are say between this um Sakusu here and this yanni here but it will be um quite some considerable more hours spent, um, including the automated proce uh, processes added to the, uh, to the sort of, um, you know, the manual labor processes at the end of it. Um, but I would go back and just bring it back to the Sakusu for a minute to say that even though we're talking um, way less than a tenth of the price with the Sakusu, 
it still ain't that bad. No, it's, it's very not. Good it, saxophone, this, and I think you probably have to, to to bring out that old phrase: that the law of diminishing returns. The here. classic. In, in the sense that um, we're not getting um, fifteen times the quality of sound. Um, on this one compared to this one here. It just doesn't work like that. You already start with a half decent sound on something like this, which makes it perfect for beginners on a budget. Of course. And, uh, and it just sort of tails off and tails off as you get more and more expensive. Of course. You find that once you get to a certain threshold, uh, say the difference between this model and the AWO 10, yes. which is the brass model, yeah. the actual sort of mechanics of it. There, it's all the same. You know, you're already dealing with a saxophone that is pretty much identical in mechanics, but we're suddenly dealing with an extra four grams worth of precious metal and this beautiful in engraving. Um, so it becomes about sort of the pride in owning something as beautiful as this. Yes. As, uh, that, that might be one factor why you would go for this. And sometimes you just want the best of the best. That might be a reason for going for something so like should. this. You deserve it. You deserve it. You, you do. deserve the best. But it might be you love the sort of uh, the rich sound of the sterling silver, uh, you know. And if you really love that sound of that, the richness in, in the sterling silver, then you have to find that extra four grand for the sterling silver because it's not a cheap precious metal. Definitely not. It's definitely going to set you back. But this is the sort of creme de la creme of saxophones yeah. uh it's it's well it's, it's my dream i think i've Is it? i've had dreams about Oof. that thing it's if i wasn't so haphazard and did gigs in tiny pubs where beer gets thrown i would have that thing in an absolute heartbeat it's lush okay. um yes so i think just before i let you play out okay this uh yannick uh because otherwise i'm just gonna purr over it the rest right. of the night uh i'm just gonna say thank you so much for watching us again uh it, please like share subscribe share it with anyone that you find that might be interested in saxophones solid silver instruments getting attacked by spiders which i am currently uh, anything that you're interested in that but for now, that's Jim Cheek making me sort of very happy on my insides. And um, he's going to play us out. All right. Don't know what to play now. <laughs>